the North Carolina impact is much, much lessened. However, this does not mean we don't keep our guards up. Good news in the latest update on Hurricane Matthew. Today's message, take a deep sigh of relief, but stay prepared. About an hour ago, we received the latest update on Hurricane Matthew, and it brings good news for Virginia and North Carolina. But we are not out of the woods yet. Let's get right to meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler with the latest on the storm now tracking more to the east, and that sounds like good news, Jeremy. Yeah, uh, to the southeast as it gets down the road. Now, in the short term, this is still impacting a large area. Right now, it's impacting the Bahamas with some tropical storm force winds on the southern edge. And the hurricane force winds, it's a small region, but that small region is going to be moving uh, to the northwest. So the big island of uh, the Bahamas and also Nassau are going to be seeing some direct impacts from this hurricane. After that point, it is forecast to move to the northwest, off towards Florida, and uh, may get very close to Cape Canaveral, Daytona Beach, perhaps and move in that direction and then move northward. Now it is expected to move northeast just for a little bit and then it's going to take more of an easterly turn. That was forecast by many of the computer models between last night and this morning and a lot of the models are in agreement now that it's going to do this and then a lot of models also take it to the southeast. So the official forecast now takes it down to the southeast. A lot of them have it traveling south and maybe even moving back towards Florida in the middle of next week. Notice this is the possible path and the only portion of our area that's in that possible path is uh, up to about just south of Manio and maybe mainland Dare County. So right now, this is favored and most likely to stay to our south. But there was such a big shift in the models and the forecast in the last 24 hours. Don't be surprised if it moves again a little bit in the next 24 hours. So right now, closer to home, remember that system is far from us. We do have a lot of clouds. There's been a couple of sprinkles here and there, but that's about it. But we do have some strong winds out there right now. They're running at about 15 to 20 miles an hour between Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton. And so those strong winds will be with us through the afternoon. Could even see a little bit of uh, tidal flooding. We already have some coming up right now, and I expect that to be there for the uh, next couple of hours, and then it'll go down. Mostly cloudy skies. We got cool, breezy conditions, couple sprinkles, and those northeast winds will continue this afternoon, 10 to 20 miles an hour, gusts up to 25. Now, I'll talk about what kind of winds we can expect for the next couple of days coming up, and I'll have more details on the track of Matthew, what you can expect coming up in just 10 minutes. Our goal is to continue to be overprepared, and our goal is to be underwhelmed, and that's exactly what we're seeking with this hurricane. And uh, so far, we're getting that reaction. Governor Pat McCrory speaking there on what we can expect for now in North Carolina. He says despite the latest track, Dare County, along with 65 other counties, are still under a state of emergency. NCDOT fees are waived for now for the Cedar Island and Swan Quarter ferries. Thursday night at midnight, all ferry services will stop to make sure the ships and personnel stay safe. Governor McCrory also offered help to South Carolina in the event it is needed. The governor yesterday, Governor Nikki Haley, ordered the evacuation of coastal areas. More than a million people have to head inland. Right now we know that two counties will be evacuating at 3 this afternoon. Haley says even though the storm seems to be slow or s slowly moving towards the east and southeast, it is still important for residents to find a safe place to be. And even though the storm changed course yet again, it's a good idea to still be prepared. You should make sure you have at least one gallon of water per person per day, along with batteries, medication, portable chargers, and non-perishable food items. And make sure to protect your home, too. Cut any trees that could pose danger and clear out storm gutters. And in case of strong winds, secure lawn chairs and other outdoor items that can blow away. I just packed up all the lawn equipment, had household chairs, furniture around there, and just put them all inside the shed. Got all my ladders tied down, and I'm just waiting on the storm. Buckle everything up. Another good idea, fill up your gas tanks. Be prepared to evacuate if necessary. The Red Cross suggests every person creates a portable emergency kit. I'm going to go ahead and fill up the tank now because as the storm gets close, you know, it's going to get more, more and more busy. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and take precautions now and get water, batteries and, and, and whatnot because you, don't, you, ne you never know which way the storm is going to turn. And remember, we have all these tips and more in our Hurricane Ready Guide. You can download that at Wayu.com or just pick one up at a Farm Fresh.